Hello, my uh, friends. Uh, uh, this is uh, Chess Cruncher. Um, this is uh, uh, one of my games, another one of my games uh, that I played uh, at the U.S. Chess Open. And uh, I wanted to show show you, um, and it, it's a really, really good game, and I hope you enjoy. So uh, let us uh, begin. I am, so, I'm sorry, by the way, I'm black and uh, my opponent is white. His name is Paul uh, Swayer, and uh, of course I'm uh, Jeremy, so you uh, know that already. So let us begin. Okay, D4, D5, uh, Knight C, C3, E4, I mean, sorry, E6. I'm doing uh, Phil Dor's defense. Um, and uh, not, then he goes Knight uh, F3. The reason he does that is uh, he's developing. But the only issue is he's uh, blocking in, in his C and his F pawns. If he wants to push them later on, he'll have to move his knight out of the way. So sometimes it's better to, uh, rather than bring your knight out really uh, right away, is to um, bring your F pawn up or your C pawn. And uh, rather than uh, doing C3 uh, on move 2, uh, he should have actually pushed uh, knight C3. He should have actually pushed his uh, C pawn to C4 and then asked the question if I wanted to trade a central pawn for his uh, side pawn. That would have been a better, but um, C3, knight C3 is uh, good also. But the only drawback is it, and it blocks your C pawn. Okay, I played b4, pinning his knight to his king, and uh, it was it. That was a very powerful move. Yes, he could kick me out, but he has to ruin his queen side, and then I can uh, move my bishop back to e2, or um, I can move it back to d3, and also have pressure against the h2 pawn if he castles. Well, like I could bring my queen out to, um, if he moved his f knight. Uh, F3 knight, I can bring my queen to H4 uh, and threaten uh, checkmate on H2 if he castles. He goes A3, of course, kicking my bishop out. I go A5, keeping the pressure of the knight uh, against the king. Then he goes D D2, he's uh, getting ready to, uh, he unblocks the pin on the king. I go knight uh, E7. The reason I did that was I'm freeing up the ability to castle kingside if I want to. And uh, he goes e3. He's opening up um, his uh, line for his light squared bishop. But if you notice, his dark squared bishop is trapped on the... Oh, he only has two um, f files that could go to. I mean, diagonals. Okay, it can only go to uh, c1 uh, or d2. Okay, and then I castle. Now I'm ready to get the party started. He goes e3, e2. The reason he's doing that is he wants to castle kingside also. I go d7. I'm getting the pieces out. And with d7, I can always uh, swing my bish my knight to um, uh, b b6, and then I can swing it down to. Um, uh, C4 and put it in a good position uh, R I can just keep it there and keep the pressure so that he can't play uh, C4 let what that's what he wants to do so he castles like like we said he would I go C5 I'm putting the question to him does he want to trade and then I'll have two center pawns for uh, for his uh, wing, wing pawn it also doubles his pawns but if you notice, I have a knight there. They can take it, and then again, I can have a, a centralized um, knight and a very powerful knight. It can, if he trades um, d takes c5, uh, I could tra I can do knight takes c5, and then I can, uh, if he allows me to, uh, I can swing my knight into uh, e4, and that's a beautiful square. Eight eight uh, eight squares of the knight could attack at d4. I mean e4, sorry. He moves his uh, knight to uh, a2. Um, he all that that I I never understood why he did that. It was like hmm. Uh, that's like a beginner move because it doesn't doesn't really do anything. 
it wastes a turn. Uh, I guess he can push his B pawn to B4 and threaten in a double attack on my C pawn, but I don't see any reason that it's not a very good move. Okay, let's continue. He allows me to push. Now I have a humongous, uh, if you notice, a wall of pawns. I have a pawn at F, F7. I have a pawn at E6. I have a pawn at D5. And then I have a, a pawn at C4. It's just, it's taking, remember when the bishop, the last squared bishop had all that diagonal to go up and down with now? I trapped it in. It's like, it's now, it, it doesn't have, it only doesn't have any squares to go. It's totally trapped in. He goes G4. I don't understand why he did that. It weakened um, his uh, H3 for a knight to pop in there for a check. Or his F3 for another knight to pop in there for a check. It also allows my bishop to come to C7 and attack it. And if I can get a knight to a, a spot where it can also attack, I can check. Yeah, that wasn't really a good move. I guess if he wants to attack in the king side, he probably should start with uh, H3, then G4. Uh, because then that, that has some protection of the G pawn. But, uh, he uh, he played G4, so let's continue on. on. I go knight F6, attacking the pawn, see the weakness. He goes H1, I go bishop C7, look at, remember I told you I'd, I'd drop my bishop back to C7. The reason is, remember, his weakness is his uh, H2 pawn. He can't play, um, because he played g4, he can't play g3 to, blo uh, to block the uh, attack. All I have to do is play knight takes g4, and then there's, a, du there's a, a, a double attack on the king, if you notice. My knight could take the pawn, or my bishop could take the pawn. And then uh, I, if I move my um, e7 knight out of the way, I could bring my queen in there, and my bishop, and it's just going to be, it would be a, Destruction, destruction. I go. He goes rook g1, protecting his uh, g1. I'm sorry, his g4 knight and pawn. <laughs> uh, he blocked his king in, but it, uh, he had to do that. Or like I said, I would have played knight takes, and it just would have been a very bad move, bad uh, thing if he didn't. I go d6, member. The pressure again is on a on the h2 pawn. My focus is totally on that. He goes rook to g uh, g3. He's trying to block, but now one of his major pieces is blocked in. If he ever moves it, uh, I can actually move my queen out of the way, and it's uh, attacking his uh, his rook all the way through to h2. But I bring my knight in, I, I say, fine, let's do this. He he goes uh, g1, again, trying to get out. I go knight takes uh, g3. I, I, I'm just going back. I want to go back to that move when my knight moved to um, d, e, uh, 4. I, he pro he should have uh, played knight takes uh, e4, and then I could play pawn takes, and that, that will attack... And uh, then I can bring my F, my pawn, my F pawn to F5. And if he takes, then I'll take, and I'll have a pretty good central, of a good central pawn position. And it's just going to be horrible. But of course he missed it, and uh, he played king to uh, G1. I played knight takes G3, H takes G3. Knight G6. Wow, that, that was a, that's a strong move, because uh, he can't push the pawn, and it also allows me to get ready to push my F pawn, because uh, it's just not a it's just a great move. He goes G2, protecting uh, the G2 um, 
sorry, the G3 pawn. I go bang, E5. I'm putting the question to him. That's right. He, he attacks. I play a queen. Now I'm pinning his uh, knight. He goes uh, B3. I go pawn, take, I mean, C takes B3. He goes C takes B3. Then I go E takes D4. Pawn takes D4. I go rook E8. Um, probably uh, maybe a better move rather than rook E8 might have been bishop takes uh, G4 because his knight is pinned to his king. That would be two attackers. Then I can always bring my knight to D5. I mean E5 again attacking the knight a triple attack. Then I could uh, bring a, maybe a rook. I could trade rook takes bishop. Or maybe I could play knight takes, then bishop, and then I can bring it down. Mm. There's a lot of different uh, options that I, I can have if I would have taken the g4 knight. But I did e, e8. He did bishop uh, f1. I went bang. Now it's if there's a double, there's one pin, the queen pins the king to the king, the knight to the king, then my bishop pins it to the queen, so it's a pin against the king and the queen. It's not very often that you see that. It looks, it's beautiful. He goes rook to c, uh, c2, attacking my bishop. I go, don't think so. I'm moving out. Now I'm attacking the pawn and I can win a pawn. He goes bishop to uh, b5 attacking my rook. I go rook e, e6. Uh, that, w that really wasn't uh, a very uh, good move because if you notice it puts my, uh, my queen and my rook on the same diagonal and he, uh, he could play uh, bishop to h of, I mean c4. Uh, I'm going to go back and we're, we're going to look at where the rook could have gone. Okay, we're just going to go back to where the rook was at e8. Um, I probably could have went to, let's see, maybe rook to c8, maybe let him take my rook and, uh, play a knight to, no, he would have taken that. I'll have to do a little more analyzing of this, but. I play um, rook to e6, um, but I was blessed. He didn't see it. He played uh, queen c1, and then I played uh, queen takes f3, check the end. Uh, that was a very, it was a double blunder on his part. It ends the game right away. He goes g1. I go bishop h3. There's no way he can uh, protect his uh, king. Because the only way is to give up the bishop, or maybe bring the bishop back to um, f1. Then I I could bring my knight in, or I could bring my rook over, and uh, then I have a checkmate on after I move my knight on the h1 file. But he again makes a mistake. He goes to c uh, rook c8 check. Rook takes rook, and you're thinking, oh no, he could have checkmate. Nope. Watch this. Knight f8. Game over. Because there's nothing he can do now. It's over. I mean, maybe, like we said, he can bring his bishop down, and I can play. Then um, I can take. I'll be. A, I can take the d4 pawn. All right, yeah, that's that'd probably be a good one. Yeah, he, that was a mistake. He does e e one. I go rook takes. He goes uh, uh, king h two, and then g two. Uh, I want to that's that's ch uh, checkmate. But I wanted to uh, go back and show you one that was a little quicker. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back like uh, three. Okay, I'm gonna go back a little bit. 
I could have rather than uh, played rook takes bishop, I could have played queen to uh, g2, and again that would have been checkmate. So uh, that with that, I uh, checkmated my opponent, and I hope you learned a lot and uh, had fun. God bless, and I'll see you next time.